The United States Army could um, uh, could uh, come further, and they they arrived here uh, to to liberate the country uh, until they um, they arrived on the river side of the river Elbe. So here in Torgau, there was a so-called historic meeting between the America, United States American soldiers and Russian soldiers. So the Russian army came from the east and uh, the United States uh, soldiers came from the west and uh, they met uh, together uh, at a destroyed, near a destroyed bridge uh, on the riverside Elbe. But uh, of course this, uh, this event was um, not as spectacular as we as we talk about. Um, there is a later there was an international press photo uh, to show uh, both groups uh, coming together and shaking hands. Probably you know about. Um, and um, uh, if you like, I I um, I want to show you the the place where this could have been happened. Yeah? But uh, in reality, of course, there were many groups of um, uh, parts of soldiers uh, along the riverside. They just realized who is uh, the group of soldiers arriving from the other side. So it was quite difficult in the moment. But okay, later they, they uh, got in contact, and so uh, there was a handshake indeed. But um, at the end of the Second World War, uh, and then there was the conference of Potsdam, and especially the four allies came together how to how to deal with uh, uh, the defeated Germany or the with the state, and especially the, the Russian president. He uh, he asked for a big uh, enlarged country to to occupy, and so um, unfortunately the American soldiers had to withdraw uh, through entire Thuringia. So they were far east here to the Elbe, but they had to withdraw from this point. Torgau and they had to withdraw, they had to give away effort yeah, back to the Russians. So please imagine this. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the uh, of the Potsdam conference, um, so East Germany uh, was born as a uh, as an occupation area by the Russian army and then only West Germany by the three allies, uh, the British, the French and uh, the Americans. Yeah, okay. Um, now it is it is nearly lunchtime, so so my suggestion is when when we arrive at the parking, uh, there is a, a restroom. We we should we should walk um, directly to the to the market square, and I hope to show you a place to have a little lunch break. And then I want to um, visit uh, the St. Mary Church. I want to visit the house of Katarina Bora. Uh, yeah, and then we will uh, visit the most marvelous. Um, Castle, a Renaissance castle uh, of um, of the, the Duke of Saxony. Uh, it was at the end of the life of Frederick the Wise. He he developed this uh, castle, part of his uh, property, and uh, later his son uh, John John Frederick, um, the, the the follower of Frederick the Wise. He developed this. Um, this uh, very fortified castle as a center of uh, Protestantism, and we will see the first, um, um, the first, um, yeah, the first meeting hall uh, for a Protestant congregation is is organized inside this castle, uh, and we will see a beautiful uh, castle buildings and especially a very famous staircase. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And all this is in Renaissance style, so Renaissance style means, of course, uh, at, the, at the end of the 16th century, the castle was developed in a very modern style, very expensive style, and at that time, uh, still the son of Frederick the Wise, Fre uh, Johann Friedrich, Johann Frederick, yeah, um, he still had uh, enough money to, to show he would be mighty, but uh, at the end he lost his, uh, his title as a, a prince elector, and so uh, the centuries afterwards, uh, Torgau um, and the most beautiful castle, the most beautiful residence castle was like a neglected uh, residence, residential area. And the family of the um, Saxonian dukes, they, they lost their um, important title because they stayed as, as Protestant uh, dukes.